Part 11 of why being an infectious disease epidemiologist makes you a Debbie Downer. You might have heard of C. diff infections, but have you heard of fecal transplants or poop transplants to treat these infections? This topic is one of my favorite things to describe to non-infectious disease people because you sometimes wonder who the heck first thought of this idea to ever try it. The concept of itself is relatively simple. C. diff is a type of bacterial infection affecting patients' guts. And whenever you're having reoccurrent C. diff infections where antibiotics might not be working, transplanting someone else's feces of a healthy individual into this patient might help treat that infection. And the donor feces can be given a few ways. One of them is being through a feeding tube down into a patient's stomach, and another is through capsules of a donor feces that can be swallowed often referred to as crapsules. And because of rising C. diff infections in recent years, fecal transplant has received more attention and more type of research and actually has some really great data out there showing good success in actually curing C. diff infections for those individuals where antibiotics is not working and they're seeing multiple infections of C. diff. And soon after some of these studies, we saw FDA start to regulate it. But let's talk about why regulation of fecal transplant is really important. Just like in screening organ donations, it's really important that we screen fecal transplants so that we're not giving any bad bacteria to recipient transplant patients. And in 2019, there was a detailed report about two patients that developed drug-resistant E. coli infections soon after getting a fecal transplant. Both patients received their fecal transplant and very soon after had severe blood infections. And one of those patients unfortunately died. And whenever they screened these E. coli infections, they found through genetic fingerprinting, DNA fingerprinting, that they were the exact same. And then when screening for the donor of those capsules that were swallowed, they also found the exact same bacteria in those capsules, meaning that the donor who was not screened for this bacteria donated this feces and was given to the patients and they subsequently developed these very severe infections. Because of this case report, all donors are now screened for this exact type of bacteria. So it's a great example of how science can inform regulation to keep us all safer. So I love telling this story because it's an innovating scientific approach to treat infections all with the joy of seeing people's face when you talk about how it's actually delivered. Also, that bacteria specifically, E. coli, I do have hanging up right here. And that's what it looks like.